Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Trader Tim from over at eminimind.com. Uh, good to be back with you here. Took a long uh, holiday weekend over Labor Day and then uh, got back in the groove uh, towards the end of last week. So we are in the midst of rollover here on the uh, futures markets. So this Friday is going to be options expiration as well as the September futures contract expiration. So <clears throat> you should be now on the December contract. That would be the front month, the one that has more volume. If you're on a platform like Thinkorswim and you just type backslash, in this case ES, you're going to get that December contract. But if you have multiple platforms that you're working on, just make sure that your contract and like your charts and your trade ladder are the same contract. Uh, sometimes this week can be a little bit screwy because traders are divided between the two contracts, either closing or rolling positions from one month to another, um, finishing up <clears throat> some trades and then starting new trades on the December. So um, okay to tread lightly during this week. But then the other thing that makes this week a little bit tricky is that next Tuesday and Wednesday there's an FOMC meeting, and Wednesday will be the uh, the meeting announcement, and so we should have some better clarity on when the Fed is going to start pulling back their bond purchases, and perhaps you know at what intervals, or at least when they're going to be starting that. So um, next week there's going to be a lot of eyes on that Wednesday afternoon meeting, and then we should have some. Uh, really good trading going into, you know, pretty much from the end of September into December. And I uh, hope that the volatility stays around um, because that will make for some bigger intraday ranges. And so the price swings are a little bit bigger. But uh, if it doesn't, and if we just end up going higher, then so be it. We'll just keep uh, keep riding the, the wave. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on before I get to some more intraday stuff is that when you're looking at overnight positions or when you're looking at a hedge, um, I find it best to manage the position near the close, like the last 15 minutes of the day. That's typically when I'll make my decision to close the position out or keep it on. Um, I did have a uh, hedge on um, going into this sell-off, I think it was the uh, 31st, no, the 30th, I think, that I put that on near near the close of the day and because we were near the negative 23%. Um, but because I had to leave early uh, one day to uh, go out and take care of some things, I decided to close the position before the close of the day. That was, uh, I think that was the, uh, the 9th. And so... Um, I closed it a little bit early, and so I didn't get the move from Friday and today, and that's okay. You know, you you don't have, you're not going to catch every move top to bottom or bottom to top. But just know that when you're looking at trades in an overnight time frame, you will, I find that I do better on the whole when I manage the position at the close. There's a lot of times where you get intraday fake outs and what might be looking like a reversal at you know lunchtime all of a sudden becomes a sell off into the close. And so when you wait to the close, sure there's going to be a few days here and there where you do get an intraday reversal and you're closing the position maybe a little bit higher than it would have been um, if you closed it intraday, but there's so many more times that I end up hanging on to the position for another two or three days, and you catch so much more move that makes up for any little um, less gain by trying to pick the bottom intraday. So that's all I'll uh, leave you with on the um, swing trading side of things. Uh, as far as intraday goes, one thing I wanted to highlight from today is that uh, if you look at a five-minute chart, um, one thing that I do like to do um, that I haven't done a lot of videos on lately uh, is looking for the five-minute gap play. So meaning when we gap up, in this case, or when we gap outside of the prior day's 
outside of prior day's range, or I'm finding that, you know, as long as the gap is beyond 10 points away from the close, so like today, our open was was more than 10 points away from yesterday's close, you know, that's enough room for the market to get exciting. And so I like to, I'll say bracket the first five minute bar, but more often than not, I'm looking for the market to break towards the gap fill. So in today's case, we gapped up, I'm looking to sell one tick below that first five minute candle and trying to ride it to the gap fill. Today, we had about four candles down and if you just trail each candle's high, um, you would have been taken out above the uh, this little uh, fourth bar. And that's okay, you're not always gonna make it to the gap fill. But you're gonna have a better chance of getting a strong move and especially getting a strong move um, and likely filling the gap if that gap is larger than 10 points. I know that some people might disagree with that, but I find that when we're opening near the prior day's close or when we're just gapping like a point or two, you know, there's just not as much room. We're closer to consensus from the prior day or uh, for those market profile folks, we're, we're closer to the prior day's value area than when we gap we create this imbalance when we gap you know, larger, either outside of the prior day's range or at least 10 points. Then we're creating this you know, inconsistency at the open from where we closed the prior day. And unless you're trading the overnight, um, there's, there's a lot of traders when the market opens that now have to uh, manage positions in a reactionary way. So um, if we were to like gap up today and then go higher. I don't always take those as gap and goes unless we are outside of the prior day's range. But I find that uh, so long as we're gapping more than 10 points, like in today's case, we gapped up a pretty good amount, but we didn't break yesterday's high. We have a pretty good chance of going back to yesterday's close, which we did get to, uh, but we just had this bounce in the meantime. And if you were to, you know, you could trail the next 61.8, and that would keep you in, and then you could just target the gap fill, or you could trail each candle. But um, in general, I, I do see the market filling the gap more than gap and go days. But when you do get a gap and go day, um, those ones tend to be the strongest when it's a gap up at lows. And so I was you know, coming into the day, I was actually considering putting on some long positions near the open. If we were to break, say, the first 15 minute high, and, and we never did. I mean, today we never even broke the first five minute high. So I was ready to go long, but only if we broke that first, I'd let, I like to use 15 minutes for longer term positions. Uh, but let's say you use the, this first five minute bar. We never broke it. So never really signaled to get long. And so tomorrow we would really need to break today's high in order to signal a push up and uh, if we go back to an interesting thing to, to note here, if we go back to the ninth, we broke above the prior day's high, that little dragonfly uh, doji there, um, the dragonfly uh, candle. And then we also broke the, the 61.8. We broke through the 61.8 short, and then we sold off. So these last couple days definitely showing a little bit different price action than we'd seen in the uh, you know all of these other pullbacks basically this year And if you look at the volume look at how much more increasing volume there is on the move down compared to like this move down there was a little bit of a jump up in volume at first but then we sort of tapered off and then made our way right back to new highs so um, I do find it helpful to kind of keep an eye on some of those volume patterns as well and uh, we'll see if tomorrow we can if we if we break tomorrow's high then we should have a good chance of some you know intraday strength may sell off into the close but um, if we break today's low tomorrow then I think we could really see some 
getting more into that panic selling mode um, and then we make our way down here to the 4360 which is still you know super bullish uh, we're still super um, we're closer to highs than we are to lows but at some point we will get a bigger sell-off and uh, you know you want to be positioned for that and so either you know buying puts when we do get a bounce or uh, you know looking to hedge in some way uh, those longer term positions otherwise if the volatility uh, you know continues even in this upper upper teens we should continue to see some better intraday uh, trades and some larger ranges like even today off of that five minute that first retracement like that that's here the 7263 uh, we did take out the, the swing low and then set up short and then we did, uh, you know, a couple legs down, and then had a, the bigger push down towards the, towards filling the gap. So, and that was, you know, from a 70, that was all the way down to a 55. So, a pretty strong move down in a matter of, oh, that was only like five or six minutes. I mean, it did not take very long. It was just before the top of the hour. So, some good, uh, some good opportunities when we do get those gaps. So long as they're, you know, 10 points or gapping outside of the prior day's range. So tomorrow we'll be doing a live trading session. You can check that out at eminimind.com/vip. And uh, feel free to drop any questions uh, below, and I'll answer those. And have a great uh, rest of your week.